Welcome to the virtual office hours, everyone. This is episode six of our fall 2015 series on the question of was America founded as a Christian nation? Uh, we've been, again, as I've been saying at the beginning of all these episodes, we've been revisiting this topic here, although we've never quite covered it on the office hours. We're revisiting it, at least for me professionally and personally, and maybe for you, uh, if you read Was America Founded as a Christian Nation, my book, uh, we'll get that up on the screen. And we're coming out with a second edition in July, so uh, I thought it would be a good time to return to some of these ideas as we think about the, the re-release uh, of that book. We have been in the middle of American history, thinking the last several weeks about the idea of America as a Christian nation. And I want to continue that today with the Founding Fathers, with Abby Blakeney uh, behind the camera, our producer. Um, last week we talked about, uh, two weeks ago we talked about the Civil War uh, as a competing uh, event between two views of Christian America. Last week, we introduced you to the NRA, uh, not that NRA, but the National Reform Association. Uh, this week, we're moving further into the 19th century, and I want to call this episode uh, Christian Civilization Under Attack. Uh, remember, through much of the 19th century, uh, the United States uh, believed that they were living in a Christian nation, and in fact, uh, a very evangelical, even very even evangelical Protestant uh, nation. Uh, after the Civil War, you begin to see some intellectual developments that are going to threaten, at least initially threaten, uh, certain individuals' concepts of what it might mean to be a Christian nation, and particularly evangelicals' concepts. Because in some ways, well, this, this was not the only way they defined what a Christian nation was, but there were many evangelicals who defined uh, Christianity theologically. Um, and that theological system that they used to interpret what a Christian civilization is uh, was being threatened. I would say it was being threatened by three things. One, uh, the rise of Darwinism or evolution, uh, scientific evolution. That threatened the traditional creation story, uh, you know, the, the story of how we got here uh, as a people. Uh, began to question accounts in Genesis and in other biblical passages that talked about God as the creator. Uh, I think the second thing was emanating from Germany and the modern research university as it developed uh, in Europe in the late, late 19th century. That was what we call higher criticism of the Bible. In other words, the idea of treating the Bible like any other literary text uh, and studying it in, in that way. Now, why is this a threat? Uh, it's a threat because uh, when you study the Bible as a piece of literature, uh, you begin to question some of the theological uh, principles or premises in the Bible. Uh, in other words, things like uh, the virgin birth, the deity of Christ, uh, the resurrection of Christ. You know, all of these things come under attack when the Bible is treated not as a sacred book, but as a piece of literature, and German universities are at the forefront of this, as well as other universities in Europe. Uh, the third thing that I like to add into the mix here that's kind of providing a threat, or at least an initial threat, uh, to this idea of a Christian nation in the 19th century uh, is the World's Fair of 1893 in Chicago. Um, a lot of things going on at that World's Fair, uh, but one of the events that takes place at that World's Fair in 1893 or thereabouts uh, is the World Parliament of Religions. Uh, here, Americans are exposed uh, to a host of different world religions, which of course have other ways of understanding one's relationship to God and understanding the source of truth and the source of divine authority, uh, Buddhism, Islam, and, and so forth. Now again, none of these things are really going to uh, undermine the notion that America is a Christian nation in the minds of many people, but uh, they are going to start to create, put some cracks in the armor, uh, if you will. And in the late 19th century, there are going to be a group of conservative evangelicals who are worried about this. They see these intellectual developments, Darwinism, uh, the world religions, German higher criticism, as a definitive threat on the theological ideas that inform Christianity. And the more these ideas infiltrate into American society, 
they will, of course, pose a threat to the very notion of a Christian nation. Uh, this, of course, is leading to what we have often refer to later on, which maybe we'll get to next week, uh, as the fundamentalist movement. Um, but it's not just fundamentalists uh, who are concerned about Christian America, but it is certainly fundamentalists who are concerned about this theological threat uh, to a Christian nation. So we will pick that up next week. Thanks for watching the Virtuous Office Hours, or Virtuous Virtual Office Hours. I hope you're enjoying your fall, and we'll see you next week.